Good afternoon, everyone. You've made it to the end of the day. Congratulations. And thanks for joining us uh, in this networking and information session about NCSL. We're going to kick it off. We know you've been doing a lot of listening and learning so far. So let's kick it off with a little trivia. We're going to test your legislative trivia. So open up that chat box. Uh, you can see on the right side of your screen there and get ready to type some of your answers. The first question we have for you, what state has the largest House of Representatives by number? What state has the largest house who has the most representatives in their House of Representatives? Go ahead and get your answers typed in there. Speed is rewarded in this game, so hopefully you can type quickly. My co-host Angela this afternoon will be monitoring that chat, looking for those answers coming in. I am looking right now. Hi, good to see everybody. Thanks, Stacey. I see um, one guest for Florida, but I see I see a winner actually over there, um, New Hampshire. Um, Heidi from um, Michigan, from the House of Representatives in Michigan has guessed New Hampshire, and I'm gonna say that is correct. And if you wanna share, how many members are in the uh, New Hampshire House? There are 400 in the New Hampshire House. So that is a big number. I'm sure you can all um, those of you who are not in New Hampshire, I'm sure you're thinking, I don't know how they do it, <laughs> but it's certainly a big job. Uh, they have great representation up there in New Hampshire. All right, we got one other one for you to kick us off here. What state capital city is the furthest south? What state capital city is the farthest south? Go ahead and get your answers in there. Again, we're going for quickness and whoever knows the right answer first. And I'm going to take a peek in the chat. I don't see anything yet, but I would just say um, it's a um, it's a it's a nice location to be in this in this. <laughs> so um, they're all great locations, actually. But uh, this one um, is a sometimes of a, a tourist destination as well. So I'm I'm looking. I don't see anything. Um, I do see a, I we do have a, a guest here, Austin, um, as one guest, and not Austin. Um, oh, Austin, Texas. Yes, yes. Not correct. Keep those guesses coming in. Your prize is lots of verbal recognition on this, <laughs> on this meeting today. Um, all right. If we don't have a guess, I'm going to say uh, it is a state that you cannot drive to. Okay. All right. Another. I hope that that is a very obvious clue. <laughs> All right. A shout out to Heidi again um, from Michigan. She guessed Honolulu, and that is the correct answer. So thank you. We hope that tricked you up. I was surprised there wasn't like a Tallahassee in there or something, but um, or yeah, or I guess a Baton Rouge she could be considered too. But no, it is. Uh, it is uh, Honolulu. So thanks so much. We have uh, lots of legislative trivia like that at NCSL. So if you're ever needing to impress your friends on a Saturday night, you can make an information request for that. And we'd be happy to provide lots of legislative information. And that gets us kicked off on what we're going to talk about today. We are going to go a bit more into depth on the services that NCSL can provide to you as a member of NCSL and also how NCSL is governed by uh, your peers, other legislators and legislative staff. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And you should be seeing that in just a moment and we'll jump right in. All right, well, I'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna introduce myself. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Angela Andrews and I direct um, NCSL's Legislative Staff Services Program. Um, this in our program and um, our world, we're really uh, focused on our services and support for legislative staff. That's um, to help them network with staff that have similar, similar roles um, with each other, as well as professional development. And happy to be with, your, with you today. Um, you met Stacy earlier, who directs our Leaders Program. And when she comes back on screen, I'll have her introduce herself. But a little bit more about NCSL, and that's really what we're here to talk about today, is to take a deeper dive into our services 
for both legislators and staff. And so you can really know how to get the most out of your um, connection and your uh, membership with NCSL. So just a little bit about NCSL, and I'm, I'm probably repeating myself here, but I think it's a good starting point, is that we're a bipartisan organization for both state legislators and legislative staff. There's 7,383 legislators and more than 25,000 legislative staff and both legislators and staff all across the nation are members. Our mission is threefold. Um, we seek to strengthen the legislative institution. We seek to facilitate networking um, opportunities among our members, both legislators and staff, and create those connection and communication among the states, and, to, and also to represent the states before the federal government. So we're going to dive a little deeper into that um, today. But Stacey, how about you get us started and tell us more about the policy research? Thanks, Angela. Uh, we are we are a clearinghouse for information and 50 state data. So if you are looking for research on a particular bill that you might be thinking of introducing in your state, or perhaps the legislator that you work for is uh, considering introducing that bill, or you might be part of a, a nonpartisan staff and are asked to research a certain policy topic. NCSL has experts on hand and at the ready to provide you with research on any topic from A to Z. And we literally mean any topic from A to Z. If we don't have information right at the ready, we can be your partner in doing original research for you. We can compile 50 state data. We do that on a regular basis through surveys to the states and are happy to share that information with all of our members. So let me give you a few concrete examples of the type of information requests we've actually just received in the last week. Uh, first of all, are the states taxing PPP loans for businesses? That's been a popular question lately. Another one, who are the longest serving legislators and leaders in the country? We can answer that. And lastly, how are states handling remote testimony? What are they doing? Are there some best practices? How are other states of a similar size facilitating that process? Those are all types of questions that we can answer. We can answer them on your timeline. And of course, all research requests that come to NCSL remain confidential. So we are your partner in that. Think of us as a research clearinghouse. All right. And then the next is connections. Um, we, as I mentioned in our mission, um, part of it is to facilitate networking connections, and that's something we do on a regular basis. So um, it's either through um, our in-person meetings or really through our webinars and the host and the variety of Zoom meetings we've been holding over the past 11 months. Um, this is an opportunity where we bring together both legislators and staff that are interested in similar policy topics or um, professional development topics or um, functions and to learn from each other and to build those networks so that when you go back out into your legislature after that meeting, you have a connection and know um, of somebody that you can talk to, um, maybe about a, an experience um, introducing a piece of legislation in their state that's similar to something you might wanna do in your state, you have those connections. We also do it through a variety of forums, not necessarily meetings, but um, forums we have through our standing committees, which you'll hear more about later, through our professional staff associations, another thing you'll hear more about, and just um, through contacting us for policy research. Sometimes we are asked um, to help facilitate a connection among legislators or staff if they're interested in a certain policy topic or topic related to the operation of the institution or a function. So on to our next service that we can provide, this idea of training. Uh, like learning opportunities like this series that you're partaking in, the Policy 101, we also offer professional development training for legislators and staff. We have a, a, a legislative training institute where we provide customized training opportunities. We, we've been doing this virtually, as Angela mentioned, for the past 11 months. But prior to that, and hopefully after this time, we uh, will continue our in-person training opportunities too, where we will come to you in your state, in your state capital, or wherever you may be in your state, to provide customized experience on professional development topics. We do this uh, for legislators as well as for legislative staff. And in just a moment, we'll give you some specific examples of the trainings that we offer for those groups, but we want you to know that we do offer plenty of customized training opportunities, both virtually and in person. 
We also serve as a voice for the states in Washington, D.C. Um, as you, um, you can see in the slide, NCSL represents and advocates on behalf of the states on Capitol Hill. And um, we fight against preemption before the 10th Amendment and for maintaining federalism. Um, this is done um, through our eight standing committees. And um, these are committees that are um, organized around your jurisdiction, much like a standing committee in your legislature. And um, the standing committees, um, policy uh, flows through them and helps direct our lobbying efforts in Washington, DC. And then last but certainly not least, uh, one of our main services is meetings, providing the opportunity to share all of that policy research and make connections with other legislators and legislative staff through a, a meeting opportunity. Typically, NCSL offers 80 to 100 meetings a year. Often these are invitational meetings. So someone in your chamber, whether it's the leader or the staff director, uh, chooses people to attend particular meetings on various topics. And other meetings are open to anybody. Again, we've been doing these in person, but we also have held several webinars and Zoom meetings to take the place of those in-person meetings while we haven't been able to meet in person. Uh, you know, you might want to be an opioid fellow, for example. That's a meeting series that we have. We also have meetings for education uh, committee chairs. That might be an interesting group that you want to connect with. And then we have several meetings for legislative staff as well through their uh, professional uh, seminars that Angela will talk more about in just a minute, or perhaps uh, management training as well. So we offer a variety of meetings that are currently available virtually and hopefully starting soon in person. So I think you're all familiar with this by now. We have a poll. Um, that we'd like you to take because we are interested um, to learn more about some of the services you're interested in that we just explained. So below your video screen, I believe you'll see a button that says poll number one. If you don't mind pulling that up and um, letting us know what services um, you're interested in and what you want to learn most about. So I think the options here are how to request research from NCSL, how to get professional development training either virtually or in your state, and what other trainings are offered, how to connect and network with other legislators or other legislative staff, what meetings might be available to me. And then the last question is in the poll is what the standing committees are and how to get involved with those. So if you can take a minute and uh, take that poll, uh, we'll look at the results and then we'll go from there. I know it's kind of quiet here on the poll <laughs> polls today. So um, that being said, I see um, there's there's some votes here for um, majority of the votes here. From what I'm seeing is how to connect and network with legislators and staff, and then how to request research from NCSL. Um, another topic is kind of the third in the poll is how to get professional development training either virtually or in state, and what trainings are offered. Well, this is great. Um, we'll go ahead and um, X out of that poll. Um, this is great news. We're gonna cover all this in the next uh, segment of our presentation. Um, and really um, the next part of it, we're gonna dive into our specific services for legislators and for legislative staff. And I think this, both, um, this, pre this part of the um, presentation will be good information about how you can connect with both legislators and legislative staff. Thanks, Angela. And yeah, we'll, we'll make sure to focus on those particular areas that you are most interested in learning. We want to dive a bit deeper into the specialized services, and I'm going to cover the legislator side of that. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to jump back into that training discussion we were just having about these professional development training services that we offer for legislators in particular. We have a, a specialized menu, a customi customizable menu that all legislators and legislative leaders can reference and pick out, you know, what applies to me? What does my caucus need? What does my chamber need? Uh, what does my leadership team need? And we can then come in and provide those service, services. Another really popular service that we offer is uh, facilitation services. So we can come in 
uh, before your session begins and talk to your caucus and, and get you all on the same page as you go into session. We do a lot of goal setting, priority setting, uh, mapping out how you're going to achieve the goals that you have for that particular session. Sometimes it's nice to have a, a neutral facilitator come in, make sure everyone's voices in the caucus are heard, and then that information can get you organized for session. Uh, we also do lots of leadership development type of programs, such as uh, public speaking or messaging for legislators. How do you get your message across by being persuasive? Things like that are all available and at your disposal. We also uh, have invitational meetings. All invitational meetings, uh, they typically go through a leadership process. So we will send information about our invitational meetings on every policy topic to the top leaders and they will nominate members to participate. In other cases, uh, we will sometimes go out directly to committee chairs or vice chairs and invite them to topical areas that could be of interest to them. So keep, keep an eye on your inbox and watch for those. Uh, currently they're in virtual form, but we hope later in the year that we might be able to resume some in-person invitational events as well. We also have a leaders center at NCSL. As Angela mentioned, that's, that's under my division. We have specialized services that we offer to legislative leaders and those who lead their chambers. They uh, require sometimes some different professional development and that is what that center does. And then last but not least, we also have an international program at NCSL. We partner with several other countries and subnational uh, governments and parliaments in those countries. And we provide international exchanges. We take legislators on study tours to other countries and we discuss uh, governance and policy so that US state legislators, as well as other subnational uh, parliamentarians and, uh, and legislators can talk and exchange information. Again, that has been put on hold, but we certainly hope to resume that soon. talk about legislative staff. And before I dive into our services about legislative staff, I want to share a quote that um, a, um, a staffer out of Texas, uh, John Heining, who um, is a former um, staff chair within the organization, had held a leadership role within our organization, um, recently said about um, the purpose of um, staff and our inv in involvement with NCSL. And, and he says, in a lot of legislatures, you'll have literally one person who performs a certain fu function, and there are only 99 of those people in the entire nation. The only way we can they can learn from people who do their jobs is by going through an organization like NCSL. And I share this quote um, because I think that really illuminates um, NCSL's role um, and purpose in supporting legislative staff. So um, next slide, please. And there's a lot, there's a lot of um, services and support um, NCSL provides for legislative staff that um, really goes beyond um, answering um, really important research requests and, um, and other um, activities you may be involved in. And it's really about supporting you as a legislative staffer. Um, and we believe that by supporting you, um, it, for those legislative staff that are listening, um, we're also supporting um, and strengthening the legislative institution. And we do this in a variety of ways. Um, the first is through our professional staff associations and networks. Um, there are nine professional staff associations at NCSL and a handful of networks, staff networks. And the staff associations are organized around role and function in the legislature. Similar to um, there being a um, state bar association or a nurses association, um, we have associations that um, are re related to your role in the legislature. For example, we have an association for fiscal analysts and directors. We also have an association for bill drafters, um, editors, uh, legal staff, committee staff, and researchers. We also have an association for sergeants and security officers, as well as something for clerks, secretaries, and their staff. So there's a variety of groups that um, you can join and be involved in and talk to staff and connect with staff that have a similar role like you do. These associations also hold annual professional development seminars, or during COVID, they've held um, regular virtual meetings um, to really discuss how do they operate? How do they do their job? 
Um, what are those best practices? What are those challenges? Um, where can they seek support from each other? So those professional de development seminars are meant for staff and um, roles and functions, um, certain roles and functions to do their job better. Um, and so we bring those uh, groups together and we convene those groups and they're an opportunity to learn from another, gain much needed professional development and help you build your network of staff across the country. Um, we also hold a uh, annual legislative staff management institute. That's what we call it. Um, this is a management and leadership development program that we've um, ha had for 30 years. It's actually the nation's premier uh, management and leadership development program for legislative staff. It's an eight day residency program. Um, Pre-COVID, it, it, it was. Um, during COVID, we've uh, put this management program online. And this is an opportunity if you're a new or, or emerging manager or leader in your um, staff organization, maybe in your caucus, in your chamber, um, this is an opportunity to gain vital leader, leadership skills and management skills to help you do your job better um, and lead your staff organization. We also offer something new. Um, it's our legislative staff certificate program. Um, this is something we started in 2020. It was based around five um, core competencies for newer legislative staff. And the purpose of the certificate program is to help newer staff gain a broad understanding of the institution and their role in it. So we know that um, learning about legislatures, learning about your role in the legislatures, it's a steep learning curve. And this um, certificate program is meant to help with that. It's meant to um, help you gain an understanding of your role um, in, in the legislative institution and also help you broaden your network as well. Um, NCSL um, also does an annual awards program and staff recognition. Um, we um, every year give out through the staff associations the Legislative Staff Achievement Award. In fact, in 2020, um, there were 23 legislative staff and one staff organization that received the Staff Achievement Awards. Um, in addition, we give out an award um, to the um, best web legislative website that makes democracy user friendly, as well as recognize staff and other legislative agencies that write um, reports and publications um, through our notable document awards. So we do a lot of work to recognize the work of legislative staff through our awards um, and annual recognition. Finally, as Stacy mentioned, um, you had heard her talk about the Training Institute and um, going into states to provide trainings. Um, she had mentioned it for legislators through caucus facilitation and retreats. But this is something we also do for legislative staff as well. Um, we have, um, have been able to go into legislatures um, for staff agencies and provide a variety of trainings. Um, for example, writing for the legislative audience um, or taking a look at soft skills through culture, um, emotional intelligence and resiliency. I want to jump in and make sure we're answering all of the, the poll um, priorities that came up. So these are all ways that we connect legislators and legislative staff. We provide these opportunities where they can get together either virtually or in person and learn from one another about similarities and differences in their states. If you're, if you're wanting to connect more with folks outside your state, all you need to do is reach out to NCSL. Some of you said, how do I get more training in my state? How do I request that? Well, you have the right people on the phone here. Angela and I oversee the training program. So you can reach out to, uh, to either of us and we'll make sure to put our, our uh, contact information uh, in the chat there. We can also make sure it's on the NCSL website. You can reach out to us for more information and, and to learn more. And then last but not least, I know several of you said, how do I request research from NCSL. And again, we're going to hope to make that incredibly easy for you right now, uh, because I'm going to say, if there is something immediate that comes to mind that you are currently researching or currently thinking about or currently thinking, gosh, I'd really like to know uh, what other information is out there or what other states are doing on this particular topic, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and type that information into the chat, certainly if you're comfortable putting it in that public forum. If you are not, then you simply just need to uh, send an email over to us and we will make sure it gets routed to the correct uh, individual within NCSL and they can get back to you. But again, if you put it in that chat, we'll make sure that it gets routed the right way. Just include your contact information. And it's as easy as that. You just reach out to us, shoot us an email or give us a call 
and we'll make sure you get the information you need on the deadline that you need. All right, we're going to jump into the governance side of NCSL right now, and we will cover this pretty quickly. But NCSL is governed uh, for you by people just like you. So we have a, uh, a board that Angela is going to talk about a bit more, and that board is led by a group of people we call the officers. There are seven officers. There are four legislators, two Republicans and two Democrats. And there are three legislative staffers that make up the group of the officers that really make key decisions uh, for NCSL operations. The current president is uh, Wisconsin Speaker Robin Boss. And the next uh, person in line to be president is Hawaii Speaker Scott Saiki. We switch every year from a Republican to a Democrat, Republican Democrat, to make sure that we are always balanced and maintain our bipartisan position. And then the current staff chair uh, is Martha Wigton. She is out of Georgia. And every year the staff chair changes as well. These people are all selected and nominated by a group of their peers. So they go through an interview process to, uh, to get these positions and are selected uh, by other legislators and other legislative staff. And what does the executive committee do and how many members does the executive committee have? Um, there are 63 members of NCSL's executive committee. 41 of those are legislators, both Republicans and Democrats. 21 of those are legislative staff. And then um, one member is a um, ex officio non-voting international member of the executive committee. And what does the executive committee do? Um, it is our um, governing body. It oversees um, our policies and the organization, oversees our budget, adopts our budget for the year, and decides matters of public policy. So it's a place where um, members of our organization have a voice and a role in how our organization is governed. Um, in addition to um, the executive committee, we also have our legislative staff coordinating committee. This is a 49 member body consisting of all legislative staff. They serve in an advisory capacity to the executive committee. And their role um, is really to focus on services for legislative staff. As I had mentioned earlier, there's 20, more than 25,000 legislative staff across the United States. This board is really focused on how NCSL serves um, those staff, um, whether it be through professional develop, development programs, um, other types of services, um, and just overall um, the work that NCSL provides for legislative staff members. In addition, NCSL, as we had um, kept on alluding to and keep on talking about, um, is our standing committees. And there are eight um, standing committees, that has, as I had mentioned earlier, that are organized around um, jurisdiction similar to a standing committee in your state. And these standing committees guide our lobbying efforts in Washington, DC. Um, and they are um, comprised of both legislators and staff. And they um, help um, give the states um, through NCSL a voice um, in Washington, D.C. So this is um, a few ways to get involved um, on NCSL's governing um, and governance and um, advisory levels as well. So this is the end of our presentation, but we certainly hope that you've learned some things that are, are new information to you. And we certainly hope we've focused on the areas that you wanted to learn most about. How, how do you connect? How can you request training? How can you request information uh, from NCSL? This information is all linked on our website as well, but we invite you to, um, to use this right away. There's, there's no sense in waiting. We are here for you and we are at your disposal. And we will take any questions from the audience if you have them, but thank you so much for joining us today.
I see two questions in the chat. Um, so Heidi, um, thank you for those. It looks like from this uh, presentation and this information about NCSL services and governance, um, this is actionable for you. So um, I put uh, Stacy's email and my email in the chat. Please email us and we'll get those uh, questions to the right policy experts and uh, get you connected to somebody that could help and answer your questions right away. With that being said, I don't see any other questions. Um, and so I, we're at the end of our time. I'd like to thank um, each of you for joining us today and learning more about NCSL services, um, taking a deeper dive with us on, about those services, and also um, learning a little bit more about our governance structure. Um, and again, my name is Angela Andrews. Here's a resource. And Stace, if you have anything else to say. No, thanks, everyone. Thanks for hanging with us till the end. And have a good weekend.